Next, we're going to move on to our Ask the Doc section. And we want to talk about what the question was, what are your three most important supplements or vitamins that you take to improve your own health? And, you know, each of us have our own opinions on that. So I'm going to let you kind of talk about it first. Sure. So I have three that I feel like are really, really important. I probably could come up with five or 10 that are just, you know, all around really good for you. But let's start off with vitamin D. You know, there are a lot of really cool um, studies out there that kind of show where do we live on earth or you know, north or south of the equator. For us in the United States and for us who live, you know, in the northern part of the United States, um, if you guys could all think of like latitude, which runs, you know, east to west across the globe, everybody who lives above, I should say, north of Atlanta, Georgia, it has been shown that you will make zero, I mean zero, vitamin D from sunlight between the months of November and March. So think about that. Everyone south of Atlanta is safe, but, you know, You've heard of the winter blues, mm -hmm. you know, kind of feel down, gray, <laughs> mind fog, you know, everything. You don't feel on point, uh, especially as you start to come around to the spring because we just haven't seen the sun and you haven't been outside um, while it's snowing without your clothes on, you know, and, and that's one of the most absorbable forms of vitamin D is getting sunlight. So you got to supplement. I really have probably the last five years been supplementing with vitamin D every day um, and I feel amazing, but I want to go into kind of the importance of vitamin D a little bit. Um, nearly every tissue and cell in our body has a vitamin D receptor. Without enough vitamin D activated in the body, dietary calcium cannot be absorbed. And calcium is essential for signaling between brain cells, development of bone, and tooth formation. And I just kind of want to jump into, like some studies reveal that low vitamin D levels are associated with the following. So I'll read off about six things here. An increased loss in muscle strength and mass as we age, which our audience would be very interested in an increased risk of cancers, lower levels of immunity, higher blood pressure, development of neurological disorders, and the development of, of diabetes. So it's really important to have vitamin D. I feel better, I sleep better, I have way more energy throughout the day when it is where it needs to be. And um, you know, I think research is on point with this recommendation, um, anywhere between 1,000 IUs to 5,000 IUs daily as being shown completely safe. I typically will tell a patient, 1,000 IUs per 20 pounds of body weight. So if you guys weigh 100 pounds, 5,000 IUs a day would be very safe. If you weigh 200 pounds, you can be up to 10,000 a day and be pretty safe. Or you can do one day a week and just have a 50,000 IU tab. And just, if you had that on Sundays, just every Sunday, just take one capsule. Cause some people wanna obviously simplify their supplement list, which I know I, I'm trying to get into as well. The second one that I feel is really important, especially for athletes, is something to bring down inflammation. And I think an omega-3 supplement is amazing if it has a good blend and if it's sourced well. So um, I think Danny Vega even went on, in on this a little bit last time on his uh, on the episode three podcast. But um, the one I currently take is from Pure Encapsulations. I have no affiliation with them, but it's called One Omega. So that's O-N-E, Omega. And it's a blend of anchovies, jack, herring, smelt, salmon, mackerel, and squid. And the two important um, uh, molecules in omega-3s are the DHA and EPA. Craig, if you want to say what those are out yeah, loud. No, I'm not going <laughs> to do it. Um, but here's some of the benefits um, that have been shown in research. May help fight inflammation, lower your risk of chronic diseases such as heart disease, support brain function and eye health, support muscle recovery after exercise, support reproductive health in men. Um, and they showed that in fact, low DHA status is the most common cause of low quality sperm and frequently found in men with subfertility or infertility problems. So really important. And I think for active individuals, um, men and women, right around two to four grams a day is good. So 2000 to 4,000 milligrams of EPA and DHA. So if you look on the back of your uh, omega-3 bottle, Take a look at your EPA and DHA numbers, add those together, that's what you wanna to try to aim for the two to four range. So if you're just feeling good, you're active, two grams a day would be helpful. If you're feeling really inflamed, joints are hurting, muscles are pretty tore up, bump it up you know, a few days to the four grams or include some you know, good salmon, maybe not farm raised, if you can get it sourced from a wild caught, that would be helpful. Um, and then on top of that too, um, you wanna make sure that the the bottle stays sometimes frozen. I think that you gotta keep it cool. You don't want these things. I know you're gonna jump into like rancid forms, but you do not want oil that's gone rancid in your body. That has terrible effects long-term and short-term. So make sure that you guys, you know, if you go get a supplement, throw it in your freezer, it'll actually 
allow the pill to get down through your digestive tract without breaking free and giving you the fish burps. Gross. Um, and then also, I think the, the third most important one that I, I'll recommend to patients is a good joint support, something that has um, cartilage, collagen, glucosamine, um, sometimes even boswellia, turmeric, and then of course hyaluronic acid and MSM. These things support cartilage health, joint health and flexibility, and they support tissue hydration and joint lubrication. So those are my big three. How about you? Cool. Um, so I have a little bit of an overlap on a couple of those, but um, I also agree with the glucosamine as a joint supplement. I think glucosamine is probably the, you know, if you had to pick one between like glucosamine and MSM and um, HA, all that stuff, I think glucosamine is probably your number one in my opinion, the uh, dosage on that's going to be 1,500 milligrams daily. Um, so again, if you have only one to pick, that's that's going to be it. Studies have shown that basically everybody gets the benefit of at least helping keep what you have. And in some studies, it even shows that cartilage has increased. So I'm like, well, if the worst that happens is I get to keep what I have and I don't know I mean, maybe it's a genetic thing where some people respond differently or whatever but I think that that's a that's a pretty good win mm -hmm. and then uh, in regards to the omega-3 that's another one uh, I've been just recently taking uh, this phys physics nutrition um, it's official it's pretty loaded it's uh, a chiropractor buddy of mine named Dr. Steve Sizz has developed this and it's 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 pretty good there's four four per use and I like it. So you guys want to check that out. It's physics, nutrition. You can chew them too and they yes. taste lemony, which is yep. rare because usually it's disgusting. If it ever bursts in your digestive mm -hmm. tract, these were pretty good. <laughs> so I've moved recently. I'm trying this now. I was taking the standard process ones and you know, a way to test omegas is to put them in the freezer and they should kind of stay liquid. You know, if it's not a rancid source and you put it in the freezer, it should stay liquid. If it turns white or freezes, chances are you got something that's rancid. So if it's really healthy and, and a good source, that's an easy test. Or filler, because a yes. lot of times you'll get this extra stuff. other omegas, and what is that, you know? Right. And I wanted to uh, branch off just a smidge on this and talk about the difference of between marine source omega-3s and plant source. So essentially, your, your big types of omegas are going to be the EPA, DHA, and also DPA, which is another one. But plants, plant sources don't contain that. So let's say you're taking a flax oil for, to try to get your omegas. It has something called LNA. Well, your body has to convert LNA to the EPA in order for it to be effective. And it, we don't do that very well. In fact, we do it very crappy. It's, it's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. So it's not a good source of, uh, of that. I mean, if you're a total vegetarian and you're not willing to supplement with these types of things, you're, you're really going to miss out on a lot of the health benefits of this. So, um, I, I know that at some point we're going to talk a lot about the, the vegan and vegetarian lifestyles, but this is one that, you know, you're going to have to supplement for sure. And even supplementing, you're going to be in a, a rough situation because you're not going to get nearly the benefits of, uh, an animal or marine source uh, omega-3 mm -hmm. so and then finally I I prefer to take a whole food multivitamin uh, the one I use is from a company called standard process we've talked about them uh, they, they created the very first multivitamin and they called it Catalan and it was in 1929 and realistically the formula hasn't changed that much and it's it's all whole foods broken down into the tablet form um, I take six of them a day. They're little, you know, my kids take them and they, they have some chewable ones for kids or whatnot. Uh, I'm not trying to plug just them, but any, any really good whole food multivitamin source. I know that Catalan contains um, a lot of carrots, a lot of sweet potatoes. It's got some animal products. So again, you're vegetarian. You're not going to be taking this. A bovine adrenal, a bovine liver, a bovine spleen, an ovine spleen, bovine kidney, and mushrooms and some some rice powders and stuff uh pea as well not like pea <laughs> peas like the vegetable weirdos um <laughs> some alfalfa so it's a bunch of crap we're not going to eat all right i'm not going to eat all that stuff but i can take it in a tablet form and i can get those benefits and when we're talking about we, we went back to danny's interview we talked about maybe 
the nose to tail eating and like feeding like and if you've got a, a pancreas problem study show like you might be benefiting by eating pancreas who's gonna eat a pancreas i'm not you know but you might I've be been eating to... beef liver lately yeah but and... i'm not gonna jump in and cook up some spleen and yeah. kidney I mean, yeah <laughs> I mean, but i would definitely be down to try something like this because you know i've tried multis through the years but this has things that the one I was taking haven't, you know, and especially like a, a bovine adrenal to kind of help reset that. How important is that, you know? Well, and there's there's been so many studies done on something like a centrum. All right, now centrum's probably going to call and yell at us, but <laughs> they've done X-rays and checked, and your body doesn't digest them, so you're you're basically pooping them out. And if you're not going to get the bioavailability from the multivitamin, what's the point of taking it? You're really throwing your money down the toilet, literally yeah, creating expensive waste yes and when we talk about whole food vitamins or uh, whole vitamins versus a you know uh, an isolate you know a vitamin c from a whole food source is not the same as ascorbic acid but the fda doesn't necessarily care about that they're just going to let it ride and, and they're going to only put on the label what it you know what how much ascorbic acid's in there and if your body can't really use that it's not helping you. So many of the companies that are out there that aren't using a whole food source, they're just getting the very minimum quality. And again, not all of them, but a lot of them are just getting the absolute minimum to be able to make a label claim, if there's even any of it in there, which is a, another topic maybe for another day. So um, those are my, my three. Those and are good. Yeah, those are really you know, important. I know that we're going to talk again in the future. I think we're going to probably talk about that's what we talked about for health. Well, well, then maybe what about for our people who are working out? What's our what's our best maybe like pre-workout, post-workout, protein source? Well, so we'll talk about that at another time. But these guys that we were specifically talking about are for general health.